right to education. Primary education should be free and compulsory. Secondary education should be accessible to every child. Higher education should be available to all on the basis of capacity. School discipline shall be consistent with the child's rights and dignity. Our main um, goal, we focus mainly on ensuring that children have access to improved educational facilities. When we talk about facilities, and now I want to bring in the inclusive uh, part of it, we are ensuring that girls integrating with the WASH technical program, we're ensuring that girls, they have sanitation facilities that are appropriate for their menstrual hygiene. So that's talking about inclusive. And then there are also Amalulu toilets that are also disability friendly. We're still speaking on being inclusive. So we believe that when children have access to improved educational facilities, they feel safe at school, they're protected, they participate, they'll be able to complete their education. Yeah. The second one on equality, we, te we train teachers on the unlock literacy model that um, improves literacy levels of our children. So there are five core reading skills where we train teachers on the approach that they can use in order to ensure that children are able to read with understanding. The third one, engage in parents and communities. We're mainly focused on reading camps, which are our after-school programs where children are also helped um, in a fun, play-based way on ways they can improve their literacy. We also have parents' uh, reading awareness workshops where we sensitize parents on ways that they can further enhance those skills while at home with their children. So what we've done, uh, basically, we, we, we engage children to write their own stories. So we captured the stories and they were printed, and then we distribute this back into our reading camps. So the children are motivated, they're not only reading books, these are the GIK books, they're not only reading books uh, by authors they don't even know, they're able to also read books that they themselves have written. So in that way, we're also enhancing their vocabulary skills, their reading skills, and writing also. Access health and medical services. We have integrated the WASH technical program to improve hygiene among our nutrition clubs that are established for the pregnant mothers as well as the nursing mothers and caregivers of under five. So in this nutrition clubs, we, we learned that most of the malnutrition cases are due to chronic diarrhea, which is due to poor hygiene. So this is why we have integrated the, the WASH technical program. So during the club meetings, uh, during the nutrition club meetings, that is where mothers prepare food together with hygiene integrated. They prepare food together and the village health workers will um, assess the immunization status of under fives and also monitor the crop of uh, the children under five. And they also convey um, health promotion messages during the meetings and since without um, food or diversified foods we cannot say we cannot achieve good nutrition among under fives we have also integrated the livelihood uh, technical program which actually supports the households of pregnant mothers and under fives to establish a homestead gardens or keyhole gardens to ensure that children have access to diversified foods. And as, as a sector, what we actually do is to ensure that each and every household or child can have a basic bread. And one demonstration that I wanted to do today was to to give each and every one of you a slice of bread. <laughs> and, and so that you, you eat the bread without butter, mm -hmm. without water, mm -hmm. and understand that some people or our children really just need this bread. Mm -hmm. And for us to be able to have all different kinds of bread, this is the basic one, is because we are able to generate enough using our hands through different interventions like field production, vegetable production, 
uh, rearing of chickens, sheep, animals. We can, we can mention all the interventions that we are doing. But in order to make sure that we are able to, to provide bread, we need to make sure that we collaborate with the communities. We engage youth, we engage their parents to be able to have the bread. And also, it's not only about bread, like I said, it's also about money. We're also equipping our economy, our, our communities to start saving the little that they are making out of the sales of their products so that they can be able to invest in education, invest in health, take their children to health facilities, be able to use proper uh, health facilities for uh, uh, pregnant mothers to give birth, and also to use not only government, but also to take out of their pockets money to pay for school fees, be able to have water. So this is the whole aspect of the food security and economic development. Water, of course, is life. Sanitation is dignity and hygiene is a habit. When it comes to a habit, we need to change the mindset of people, which needs everybody and everywhere to, to engage and, and, and ensure and encourage practices to be adopted and day to day being implemented. Thank you very much. Why are we blowing a whistle to ensure that all people report issues of gender-based violence? How are we ensuring that children are cared for? We have been implementing the child protection and advocacy model to ensure that communities are caring for their children. Protection, we are also working together with other relevant stakeholders. We're talking UNICEF, we're talking uh, social development as the ministry to ensure that uh, we protect uh, children in any way. Issues of child abuse have to be reported. We're working towards ensuring that the reporting and referral mechanisms are clear. How are we ensuring also that now boys and girls are participating? In different activities that we are taking, we make sure that we capacitate boys and girls through different models such as training them on uh, becoming children journalists, training them on becoming members of parliament, and ensuring that they link with relevant service providers, including the uh, policy makers, where currently they are advocating to ensure that the CPWA as a current law has in it issues of child marriage, which wasn't there. We've seen an increase in issues of protection within our earlier programs, where currently we see at least 69% of communities indicating that their environments are safe for children to, to live in. Thank you. So under church partnership, that's where we build the capacity of the church leaders or the faith leaders on different models so that they are able to participate meaningfully in addressing some vulnerability factors that impact negatively <coughs> on the well-being of the children. We have different uh, approaches like uh, channels of hope. We have channels of hope for child protection where we build the capacity of the church leaders so that they are able to participate in creating a safe and protective environment for different categories of children. We also have channels of hope for gender, which is meant to improve, uh, address issues related to gender-based violence. We have a uh, channels of hope for HIV and AIDS, and channels of hope for maternal and newborn. So those are the models that we use to build the capacity of the faith leaders so that they help us to ensure integration of uh, faith and development in different sectors, uh, as I have indicated. And the pillar number two, which is the formation, that's where we target the staff. We know that charity begins at home. So we make sure that we build the capacity of the staff, we help the staff to be spiritually nurtured, and we have different uh, SMC um, activities like the daily devotion, the staff formation, activities like uh, the staff retreat and other activities. So besides that, we have uh, the spiritual nurturing for boys and girls. That's where we, we target the, the boys and girls, those aged between 0 and 18 years. Then we do biblical life skills using different approaches. We have the children's class just to make sure that children are spiritually uh, nurtured. Thank you so much.